Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today, we're going to reshoot some of our Whiteboard Wednesday stuff on uh, local loud load balancing algorithms. And uh, we're going to mix them up a little bit differently than we did in the first series, but uh, this, this next set of load balancing algorithms videos will replace those. And so today, we're going to start with uh, round robin uh, ratio and dynamic ratio. And so uh, with, with round robin and, uh, and ratio, these are static load balancing methods in that the, the round robin um, uses uh, very basic, uh, just uh, very basic load balancing, uh, start with the lowest IP and then it bounces back and forth on however, like if you have two pool members, it's just gonna bounce back and forth. So if we start with round robin and we have your big IP, and say we have three pool members in here, then this algorithm is going to deliver connection one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and so on. It's just gonna uh, round robin it uh, about its merry way. This is the default load balancing algorithm on Big IP, and uh, it, it's a good one, and unless you have a specific need, especially if you have similar resources on your servers, round robin with the persistence profile uh, works in the majority of cases. And so, you know, it's nothing fancy, there, there's nothing uh, amazing about the algorithm, but it just works. The next thing we'll talk about is ratio. And when you're using the ratio load balancing algorithm, this is also a static uh, load balancing algorithm, and and it's also called you know we don't call it this, but uh, some other uh, resources out there will call ratio like weighted round robin, and and this is something you configure on your pool members or your nodes, and so ratio uh, can be configured as uh, node. Uh, you'll see this in the parentheses or member. And so as you come down and say, we'll draw this a little bit differently this time. Uh, let's do, um, this will be my node in green. So I'll put these in green. Those are my nodes. And say at a node level, I have a ratio of 10, 20, and 30. And then within a particular pool, I have a pool member in there. These are pool members. And say on the pool members themselves, I have five and 10 and 20 configured. And so at a node level and a, um, pool member level, I've got that configured. So what happens is, if I have ratio node configured, no matter what's happening with all of my different pools, once I get to 10 connections, um, it's going to stop receiving uh, traffic until you know the 20s are uh, taken care of, and then 20s will stop until the, you know, we get up to the level of 30 on this one, and that's at a node level, uh, if the, uh, the pool algorithm that you've set is node. If the pool algorithm that you set is member, then it's not going to care about the value set on your, your, uh, your node. It's gonna look at this, this individual pool member within that node, and so again, it's, you know, once I get the five, I'm gonna go five across the board, so I'll get one, two, three, four, five, uh, and then I'm going to hit my 10 there, and uh, for each of these, by the way. And uh, so that pool member got five, that pool member got five, this pool, each of these pool members all got 10, and then this is going to get 10 more before then I get another connection. And so ratio is, again, pretty simple. 
uh, and you know you may have a situation to where you have a lot of applications, a lot of different pool members, and so you care more about how the server itself is performing rather than just an individual pool member, and so you want to be able to uh, to manage your dissimilar resources at the node level, and and so then we can look at also a third type of ratio, and that is ratio session. And this one requires, let me put a, do this in pink, this requires an L4 and an L7 profile. And also um, with a, a ratio of a session, it is looking at um, pending sessions are also considered active. And so a session is considered any transaction between same client and server over an active connection. So if you have a client out here, let me just do, if I have a client to a session, um, I'm, I'm sorry, to a server, and, uh, and then I have another client to a server, and another client to a server, uh, but I have Within that, I have like five sessions on that connection, and then I have six sessions on that, and say I have 10 sessions on that connection. It's going to look at these numbers for that rather than, rather than at this level. So it's not looking at this level of connection, it's going, to, it's going to calculate your ratios based on the value uh, across that connection, not the connection itself. And so, you know, again, that's still, you're considering dissimilar resources on your backend servers. You're just going to look at, at the session level rather than the connection level because the connection level isn't as helpful to determining how your resources are being used um, in the uh, at, at a layer seven environment for things like message-based load balancing and stuff. All right, finally, let's talk about uh, the dynamic ratio. And, and you, know, you can consider dynamic ratio the dynamic weighted round robin. And the only difference between ratio and dynamic ratio is how it gets that ratio. With the static one, you're configuring that on your pool members and nodes. Uh, with dynamic, you're using a performance monitor to do that for you. And so if you look at something like uh, the SNMP DCA, let me, uh, okay, so the SNMP DCA monitor, then you would assign that to your, your pool and, and then it's going to go out and pull that data from your servers. And so based upon how your server returns that information, it's going to calculate the ratio for each of your, each of your pool members. Um, and of course, it's, it's, it's pulling to the server, but then it's using that data within all of your pool members of, as what that dynamic ratio is. And so to give an example, um, or actually before we get to uh, kind of the math of it, uh, you know, the ratios themselves are updated as poll data is received. So if your interval is a really long interval, then your ratio is not going to be as accurate as things are moving around. Uh, so if you want a more precise and a more accurate ratio uh, real time, then your interval needs to be a little smaller. However, when you're actually looking at performance data rather than just a, a, an availability, then, you know, the server has to do a little bit more calculating and giving that data Big IP has to do a little bit more calculating and receiving that data. And so, you know, there's a, there's a push and pull on, on where that interval should be. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind and, and to test in your environment um, on, on how precise and accurate in any particular window you want that ratio to be. And the ratios uh, for, let me do uh, dynamic. ratio, uh, you want to use a performance monitor. And, uh, and the, the dynamic ratio itself is going to be between 1 and 100. If it calculates higher than 100, it will, it will round down to 100. And then 
so if you want to see what your dynamic ratio is, you can do a TMSH list LTM node dynamic dash ratio. If you want to see it on the pool member, that's a TMSH list LTM pool members. And then you just have to, you know, uh, get that data out of the uh, expansive stuff you return. Unless you use something like I control and then you can pull out that specific attribute. Um, but you can see what your ratios are at any particular time. And if you wanted to be able to graph that data uh, in conjunction with what your actual server traffic looks like, then you can get, you can get a feel for how, how accurate your sliding window is between ratio and, and traffic on your pool members. So you can kind of tune that in. And so as far as how the, the ratio itself is calculated, there is an equation uh, for that. And if you look at the SNMP DCA monitor, the default I think is uh, 1.5 uh, is for um, uh, CPU is the coefficient and 1.0 is the memory coefficient and uh, 2.0 is the disk coefficient. And uh, if I recall correctly, and I, I didn't look this up, but I think CPU is uh, 80, memory is 70, and, uh, and disk is 90%. And so basically you're, you're wanting to, uh, or what Big IP will do with that data is, and I think I have this calculation correctly, it's gonna take the uh, number of pool members and you do it uh, to the exponent of the, your coefficient times your, uh, your threshold minus your utilization over your threshold. And so for each one of those, then you add those, uh, you, you know, you sum all three of these calculations and then that gives you your ratio. And uh, uh, in this case, if, if uh, um, well, I, I don't have the math in front of me and, and uh, doing exponents uh, without a calculator would be hard anyway, but assume that, that uh, you know, a ratio came out. Uh, if I have uh, three pool members here and pool member one, two, and three, this one came out to be 102, this one came out to be 67, and this one came out to be four, then this one's going to be rounded down for calculation to 100. This one will remain at 67, and that one will remain at 4. So server 1's going to get a whole lot of traffic uh, before uh, server 3 uh, will come up there. And uh, the other thing uh, to note as far as this calculation is concerned is whatever your threshold is, if you violate that threshold in the calculation, it uses the threshold value in this calculation to avoid going negative. And uh, so anyway... Uh, we will have more of these load balancing algorithms in future videos, uh, but that covers today round robin uh, ratio and dynamic ratio, and of course uh, the the, uh, the ratio sessions, which is a, a, a little bit um, of a, a different uh, conceptually because it's not on the connection, it, it's on the, the uh, layer seven uh, attribute of that. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, click subscribe, and uh, we'll see you out there in the community.